now. But here's the deal. Our forefathers fought and died for tyranny. They resisted tyranny at all levels. They wanted one nation under God with Jesus Christ and him crucified as their sovereign king. Nobody else. Yet the tyranny they face is minuscule compared to the tyranny we face, yet the Christian church is asleep. Your pastor's speaking more about BLM and George Floyd than you do the unborn. The real tyranny. Friday night, a Christian pregnancy center was burned in Longmont, Colorado. They say, you stop us from killing babies, we will kill you. tyranny in our schools my eight year old Giselle can be taken in to get transitioning medicine without the parents knowing it drag queens can come in and teach your children and you're not informed drag queens my 13-year-old can be taken down to, the, to Planned Parenthood and have an abortion, and I would never be aware of it. Yet people get mad at me. Listen, I'm not about politics, guys. I'm about righteousness. My God is a holy God. My God is a righteous God. My God is a God of justice. My God hates evil. He hates sin. And he hates the godless. Yet he died for them. So I want to be clear on that. I'm a, I am a total sponsor of abortion. There's been multiple girlfriends of mine that have killed my baby. But God saved me. And redeemed me. And forgave me. Because God is a God of forgiveness. Norman McCovey, the one who actually was the silent row person, she actually gave her life to Jesus Christ. She said she was gang raped. And you can read it in all the books. She was great gang raped. That's why Roe versus Wade even happened. Yada, yada, yada. But now she confesses that that was a lie. And she's been baptized into Jesus Christ. The one that started all this. Baptized into Jesus Christ. So our God is a God of forgiveness and a God of grace. And a God of mercy. And we have Dietrich Bonhoeffer and Neumoller in Nazi Germany. The only two that would resist Hitler and say, you leave the church alone. You get, you, you tyrannical leader. You stay away from the church of Jesus Christ. And what did he do? He hung Dietrich Bonhoeffer and blew up a church and uh, the parsonage of Neumoller put Neumoller in prison. They were the only two pastors that stood up against the tyranny of the Nazi Germany and caused seven million Jews to die while the church and their pastors were silent. Shame on them. They did it in the, the heart of appeasement. Well, maybe if we just go along with Hitler, we'll be able to appease him. But let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you will never be able to appease a tyrant. It is literally impossible. And this great nation of ours was founded on biblical principles. Matter of fact, the first four battles of the Civil War were fought by pastors leading their congregation into battle. Yet now our pastors are more worried about social justice than they are the gospel of Jesus Christ. And standing up against for the unborn, for CRT and racism and everything else. Shame on them. Shame on them. I don't care if I get hung or put in prison. I will never back down from righteousness. I love my King Jesus and I love what he loves and I hate what he hates. The thought of my eight-year-old or my 11-year-old boy being taken in by somebody in a school to begin transitioning never letting me know listen people this is serious I could give a rip about politics there's three things and three hills I will die on 
Number one, it's the unborn. The prophet Jeremiah was told by God himself, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. John the Baptist is inside Elizabeth, who was a miraculous conception because she was in old age, past her menopause stage, conceived and gave birth to John the Baptist. But when John the Baptist heard Mary with three-month-old baby Jesus in her womb, John the Baptist leapt in the womb for joy. Yet in Colorado, baby, baby Jesus or John the Baptist could be sucked out of the womb and coming down the birth canal alive and having a pair of scissors stuck in his head. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not politics. Wake up. That's a baby created in the likeness and image of God. God created the family. God created children. God created marriage between one man and one woman. And so if I say, look, don't vote for Doug Lamborn. He voted for three baby killing bills. One to give a half a million, half a billion dollars to Planned Parenthood. That's $500 million. That equals 1 million babies. That's not politics. That's righteousness. Two other bills, baby killing bills. Not even to mention the sanctuary city gun control part of it or the training for the military and LBGTQ training or the training in the military for CRT and intersectionality, which is racism. God created man in his own likeness and image, one blood, one race. He doesn't see black, white, brown. He doesn't see Asian. He doesn't see European. What he sees is he sees man created in the likeness and image of Jesus Christ. And the only difference between me and Carl is the melanin in our skin. God looks at the heart. Yet we have Republican politicians voting for CRT and intersectionality in the schools. We have people like Doug Lamborn voting for abortion, a half a billion dollars to fund Planned Parenthood. And I'm to be quiet? I'm angry. I have righteous anger. I'm tipping over the tables because it has to stop. We have LBGTQ training in the military, in the schools. What is a woman? We got people that can't even answer that question. Yet I've talked to people that have transitioned, trans people that have transitioned. And they say, yeah, I'm no longer a man, I'm a woman, because I ended up with everything cut off and in a Petri dish. But I can tell you right now, it's the worst decision I've ever made. And did you know that there's a thousand percent more of a chance for people in the LBGT community to commit suicide than any other community? So we love them. And we share the gospel of Jesus Christ because the Bible is very clear. It says, such were some of you who had been come out of that lifestyle and been rescued and set free by one thing and one thing only. And that's Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. Amen. God loves these people and it's up to us to share, but also expose the unrighteous deeds of this world. We are in a serious time. And people stormed the beach of Normandy and died. And our kids don't even remember that or know that. That they were out trying to destroy Hitler and the evil of the world. And they gave their blood. And the Bible's very clear. If anyone makes any of my little children stumble, let them have a millstone tied around their neck and bound them thrown into their sea. And we have the tyranny of racism and degenerate perversion in the form of drag queens and school force sex cha changes and sexualizing of our children and shoving their godless agenda down their throat. And listen, people, the, the gospel offends, righteousness offends, truth and justice offends. And I don't want God to say, Garrett, why were you silent? Rich Bennett reached out to a group of friends of mine who runs the Life Care Center here in Colorado Springs asking for people to stand guard. We need security guards to guard because he's gotten threat after threat after threat saying we're coming to kill you and burn your place to the ground. Hazel works there. She's one of the secretaries there. 
We give Bibles. The Bibles that are in that life care center are paid for by Fervent Church. People say, we sponsored Hazel to do the walk for life. These are our friends. These are our brothers and sisters in Christ. And they save hundreds of babies every year. Will we stand up? Will we be the Bonhoeffers and the Neumollers in this generation? Or will we be like just the other thousands upon thousands of pastors and church Christians that stood idly by? Listen, there's three messages you need to hear from me. One is one race, one blood. Or I speak about racism. Second one is Romans 13, forgetting God. You need to look it up if you're new here. You need to hear that one. And the third one is about, uh, is about the, the, the LBGTQ and what God thinks about it and how, God, how we should respond to them as well. And that's Second Timothy chapter 3, such a time as this. But did you know the church was by the railroad tracks in Germany? And every Sunday morning, there would be carloads and carloads of Jews going by on their way to the extermination camps. And the pastor and the choir director, when the train would come by, made everybody sing louder, sing louder, so they didn't have to hear the wails and the weeping and the screams of the people going by. Singing Kumbaya. And just like in biblical times when King Manasseh built an altar to Molech and it, which had brass arms that stuck, stuck out and you'd climb a flight of about 15 stairs up to the brass arms and they would heat Molech up with fire, unquenchable fire. And they would roll their babies down the arms of Molech into the fire, sacrificing them. What did Elijah do? He called fire down from heaven. Listen, trust me, I know you can't legislate righteousness, but we can stand up and we can speak the truth. We can love what God loves and hate what God hates. We can stand up when our children are being conditioned to hate God and to hate Christians. My wife got an Instagram post from somebody that she grew up with in the Christian church this morning and read it. And she goes, you know, I, I would never have an abortion, but I don't think it's right for us to tell other people that they can't have abortions if they can't afford them or if it's an inconvenience. This is Christians, guys. Public school Christians, by the way. She has family members. I have family members that believe Young 20-somethings, that killing babies is okay. The transitioning is okay, that God doesn't care about things like that. Don't what my Bible says. Matter of fact, Romans chapter 1 says he turns them over to a debased mind. And listen, I don't want to be like Lot who lived in Sodom and Gomorrah and it, it vexed his righteous soul. It vexed his righteous soul that he led not one person to Christ. There were not 10 people that knew God in that whole city. Oh yeah, he sat there and it vexed his righteous soul, but he said nothing and he did nothing. Is that you? This is the gospel. There's three hills for me to die on. Baby killing. Racism in the form of CRT or intersectionality. My best friend's black. I didn't even know he was black until a couple months ago. And LBGTQ being forced on our little children in the form of any kind of sexual perversion in any way, shape, or form. Those are gospel issues. Those aren't political issues. Wake up, people. Liquor stores open. Strip clubs open. Abortion clinics open. 
Dispensary, marijuana dispensary is open, yet the church is unessential. That's not tyranny. I don't know what is, people. I can promise you this. I don't care if they threaten me with imprisonment or death. We will never shut these doors. I need you and you need me. I love you. And I will always tell you the truth. I will never pull back from it. Was Elijah silent? Was Elijah silent? Was, uh, was Isaiah silent? Were the minor prophets silent? Were John the Baptist silent? Was Jesus silent? Why is the church silent? We will pray and we will stand. And we will give our God-given rights, given the inalienable rights given to us by God. And by God, I am going to stand firm in my beliefs and stand up for the gospel, for righteousness, for justice, and for truth. And there's only one person that can give all those three, three things. It doesn't come from any group or organization besides the church of Jesus Christ. Not of Latter-day Saints, by the way. The church of Jesus Christ. The blood-bought church of Jesus Christ. You and me. And our King. The sovereign King Jesus.